introduce today's topic, we're going to look at flow past a flat surface. So I have some um, solid object, nice and flat, that I have a uniform flow coming in. So some flow uh, left to right, uh, everything's nice and uniform. Velocity is equal to some value, capital U, the entire time. Um, so everything here, velocity is equal to capital U. I want to know what happens when it hits this plate. So what does this velocity look like over here? So on the surface of the plate, we have the no-slip condition. No-slip condition means I have zero velocity. So whatever this flow velocity is, it slows down to zero um, on the surface of the plate. Far away from the plate, there's going to be some region where um, the flow doesn't really feel the plate. So far away from the plate, I'm going to have the same uniform flow velocity, Vx equal to capital U. Question is, what happens in between? And the answer to that is something called the boundary layer. So I'm going to have to have some velocity change from zero on the surface of the plate to some velocity, capital U. And inside that region is what we call the boundary layer. So my boundary layer is defined to be the region where the flow speed is less than 99% of the, my free stream, free stream being capital U. So I have these velocity profiles. Uniform flow comes in, hits the front of the plate, it's going to stop. And so I'm going to have zero velocity basically right at the front. But then uh, as it goes down, that zero velocity is going to influence the layers above it. And so the flow above it is going to start to slow down as well. And so this red line kind of in, uh, indicates where that 99% of U actually happens. And so inside of that, inside this dashed red line is my boundary layer. Outside of that is not the boundary layer. Now outside the boundary layer, the velocity really isn't changing very much. It's only changing by 1%. It goes from 99% of U to 100% um, of U. So it doesn't really change very much. So because it does not change very much, I don't have um, much shear stress. Shear stress, remember, being change in velocity over change in height. There's really no change in velocity up here. So I have basically zero shear stress outside the boundary layer. All my shear stress is inside the boundary layer, so that's why um, this is important. Because outside of here, I can ignore shear stress. Inside of here, shear stress is important. The first thing I want to do is know where this red line is. So this where, where this red line is um, is my boundary layer thickness called delta, and we'll see how to calculate that in a minute. So it was shown that the velocity profile vx at some distance away from the plate in the vertical direction uh, y. So my x y coordinates basically start on the front edge of this plate. Y goes up, x goes down my plate. So the velocity. Um, at that location is related through this functional analysis. So Vx over free stream velocity u is related to that position y over the boundary layer thickness delta. This basically comes from dimensional analysis. So dimensionless number is some function of the other dimensionless number. The boundary layer thickness delta was found to be uh, 5 times x divided by the square root of the Reynolds number at that location x. So basically from, again, the front edge of my plate, that's x equals 0. Then wherever my boundary layer thickness that I want, I go down that value of x. So the boundary layer thickness here is based on this value of x. So find my Reynolds number based on that value of x. Standard equation for Reynolds number, density, free stream velocity, length over viscosity, or I can combine density and viscosity and the kinematic viscosity. Either way, I get the Reynolds number based on that location, and then 5 times that value of x divided by the square root of that Reynolds number tells me what this boundary layer thickness is at that location. Another important parameter is the shear stress, um, namely the shear stress acting on the surface of the plate. So that was found to be uh, 0.332 mu viscosity free stream velocity is 3 halves power divided by, again, this location x um, to the 1 half power, kinematic viscosity to the 1 half power. And you can really realize that uh, what I have here is basically u times the Reynolds number. So shorter way to write that, 0.332 viscosity mu, u over x, Reynolds number to the 1 half power. Again, all this is based on where I am as my location. So the further down I go, um, actually the less shear stress I have, because my velocity is changing a lot in this area, 
It's a really high change of velocity, really big shear stress. It takes a long time for this velocity to change a big value of y. So smaller shear stress as I go down my plate. So the reason why the shear stress on the surface of the plate was important was because that is how we can find the drag force or acting on this plate. So if you integrate that shear stress over that area, we're going to get the drag force. So taking that equation we had before for tau and integrating that over the length, um, technically the area is this length times the width in and out of the page. But in and out of the page, nothing's changing. So I'm going to multiply by the width, capital B. So when we do that integration, I have x to the 1 half power on the bottom. Integral of that is x to the 1 half power on the top. Of course, I have a half come out, so 0.332 becomes 0.664 multiplied by 2. And then my x to the 1 half um, goes on the top, um, but that's from 0 to L. So that's just L to the 1 half. So what I end up with is 0.664 uh, width in and out of the plate, mu, free stream velocity, then Reynolds number to the 1 half power. And this Reynolds number is um, based on L, so not x like you had before, because x goes from 0 to L. So x is replaced with L, my Reynolds number. And so you can see from this equation, if I have a bigger plate, bigger value of B, or bigger value of L, that's going to increase the force, which makes sense. If I have a bigger viscosity, um, remember viscosity is like fluid friction, so that's more frictional force. I have, again, a bigger drag force in that case. If I have a bigger velocity, again, I'm going to have a bigger drag force, and this all kind of makes sense physically, intuitively. So we just saw equations on how to find the shear stress and the force acting on the flat plate. Turns out sometimes it's better to calculate the coefficients of shear stress or coefficient of force. Um, and so to do that, we can go back to the definition. So coefficient of shear stress looks a lot like the coefficient of pressure. Um, I have shear stress divided by 1 half rho u squared. So I take my previous equation for tau, 0.332, mu, u over x, Reynolds number based on x to the 1 half power, and divide that by 1 half rho u squared. So expanding this out, Reynolds number is density, velocity, x over mu. Um, and then putting all that together, numbers I have 0.332 divided by a half is 0.664. I have mu over mu to the half, so mu to the half power on top. In terms of u's, I have u, u to the half, u squared. So that ends up with the u squared on the bottom. Density, density to the half. Density on the bottom, x to x at the half. x to the half on the bottom. And then I have density, velocity, x over mu, all to the one half power. So that's Reynolds number to the one half power on the bottom. So coefficient of shear stress, C tau, 0.664 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. So similarly for the force coefficient, force coefficient is force divided by one half rho v squared area. So take the force equation we had before, 0.664 b mu u, Reynolds number based on length, the one half power, and divide that by one half rho u squared a. Now, Reynolds number based on length, I get a rho to the one half, u to the one half, l to the one half, u to the one half for that guy. And then my area is the area of the plate, b times l, essentially. And so now again, doing all those cancellations, end up with 1.33, u to the one half over rho to the one half, u to the half, l to the half. That's Reynolds number based on length, the one half power. So 1.33 divided by square root of Reynolds number, this time Reynolds number based on length. So time for an example, I have crude oil flowing over a flat plate at one foot per second. Uh, basically want to find what the resistive force is acting on the plate, so what's the drag force in this scenario. Now, two things about this question before we get to the actual solution. Um, number one is this Oil is flowing over the flat plate. Because it's flowing over, um, I can assume it's not flowing under. And so we get to what that means when we get there in the solution. The other thing is there's two dimensions here. It's four feet wide and six feet long. Again, we'll see what that means in a minute. So 
So to solve this, you're going to actually do it two ways. Uh, the first way is kind of just the what you may think is the simple solution. I have an equation for force, 0.664 b mu u Reynolds number to one half power, and um, few things with that. I wasn't given viscosity, I was given kinematic viscosity, so I want to change that. And then the Reynolds number, U times L over kinematic viscosity. We're plugging those two guys into there. I get my force is 0.664 B density, kinematic viscosity one half power, cruising velocity at three half power, length of the one half power. And now comes the part that I was mentioning before. Um, in terms of these lengths, I have a length of six feet and a width of four feet. So I have two choices here. B, the width, L, the length, which one's six, which one's four. Now it might seem a bit obvious because I called four feet the width, so four feet should be this guy here, and that is the case. L should be six feet, that is the case. Um, generally what you want is the length is whichever way the fluid is flowing. So in terms of the picture I had before, fluid coming in, the length would be um, that direction, the length of the plate, the uh, same direction as the fluid flowing, width would be in and out of the page. So that's what um, the six is the length, four is the width. So anytime the question says a length, um, that's what it means. So now plugging those numbers in, four feet for my width, density of 1.67 slugs per cubic foot, kinematic viscosity 10 to the negative four feet squared per second, velocity one foot per second, and length six feet. All that gives me 0 0.109 pounds for the drag force on this plate. So nothing wrong with the previous method. Um, worked fine, got an answer of 0.109 pounds. We're gonna see this second method is gonna give us the exact same answer. Um, but I like the second method a little bit better. Uh, might seem that it's a bit longer, which may be the case, but I like it because um, the equations are simpler. The last equation was kind of complicated. There's stuff going on a whole bunch of variables, stuff to the one half hour. Equations I'm gonna be using are a lot simpler than that. That's the first reason I like it. The second reason I like it um, has to do with the next lesson, so hopefully during the next lesson you'll realize why I like this method better. So this method involves three steps. First step is to find the Reynolds number based on length. So Reynolds number based on length, velocity, length, divided by kinematic viscosity. So my velocity, one foot per second, length, six feet, divided by kinematic viscosity, 10 to the negative four feet squared per second, gives me a Reynolds number of 60,000. Second step, I want to find my CF. So CF, we found for this plate, is 1.33 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. That's what we just found. So a nice simple equation there. Um, gives me 0 0.00543. And the last step, I want to find my force. And my force, I find through the definition of this CF. So CF rearranged force is 1 half CF area rho velocity squared. So 1 half my CF value that I just found area six feet by four feet, density 1.67, and then velocity one foot per second. Again, gives me the same value, 0 0.109 pounds. So same answer as we expected. Now, last thing to mention, um, when I introduced this problem, I highlighted the word that said over, uh, meaning the flow was only going over the plate. If it was a case where it was not going only over, but both over and under, um, then basically all I need to do is take this area and multiply it by two because this area, six feet by four feet, is the top area. If I have it going over and under, I need the bottom area as well. So basically you have twice the drag force in that case. So all the equations that we derived are basically only for one side. If I am in a situation where I have two sides, I need to multiply it by two. Um, anytime the question says over, it means only over. So that means one side.